that brake pad? Should not be that low. Ay, ay, ay. So that's what happens when you live near the salt water or you launch your boat a lot and the rear wheels get splashed every once in a while. Wears down your brake pads a whole lot faster than normal. bamboo stick there's my burlap sack you know the funny thing about this I got it at the botanical gardens in San Francisco where they have different sections for plants growing from different parts of the world I think this one was growing from Asia and I asked the curator or whoever the guy was there can I take this bamboo stick it's the perfect thing for a poke pole good 12 feet long well maybe this one's 10 foot but got it and that's what I'm using so right now since I'm at a little bit of a higher spot I'm looking out here and I'm trying to find where has the most potential. Now you can see to my left over there, the water goes in, but it gets shallow. So I could walk along the beach shallow here and then go out around there. And I think, if I remember correctly, it's been years since I've been here. There should be a couple holes there. So it's been so long, I'm gonna try my luck, see if I still got it. Totally do not remember where my spots are. Ah, all right, I'm gonna find them though. There's a nice pool right there. All oh, this looks nice, but I'm gonna get closer to the waves. Ah, oh, man, it helps a lot wearing waders out here too. One thing I would recommend though, if you do have waders, probably don't wear these sandals if you got them, it's just because they're so loose. You know, you, you want something tight, especially when you're going over the rocks, it's a lot easier to slip if they're loose. Man, it's probably blowing a good 25 miles per hour out there. So while I have a little bit of shelter, I'm gonna get some rigs tied, actually just get one rig tied. When I'm going poke poling in these tiny saltwater pools, I like to use a smaller hook because monkey face eels are the main target and their mouths are quite small. So this is a size two bait holder hook. That'll work. A small size one or another size two octopus hook would also work. So I got the size two hook and to go along with that, I've got this 50 pound leader. Now I could use a, uh, it's just a snap swivel and attach that directly to my coat hanger on the poke pole. But I personally like to use heavy mono to attach it. It just feels better to me. It doesn't get stuck in the swivel. So I've got 50 pound leader and that's the minimum I would go with because you're banging on a lot of rocks down there and this could get frayed really, really easily. So a little bit hard to see, but I'm gonna tie this 50 pound mono to the size two hook with a simple old clinch knot. Nothing special, just maybe four four twists. When the mono is thicker, you don't need as many loops. So that's good enough right there. Pull it down tight. Now we just got to tie the rest to our coat hanger. So this is going to be interesting to see. I got a GoPro tied on here at the end of this bamboo stick coat hanger wrapped around with some duct tape. And at the end, I made a little loop. See that? So I'm going to tie this leader as close to the end and as close to the hook as I can. I only want about an inch or two of leader past the eye of this coat hanger. Now if you have a weight or if you have another hook, that helps a lot to tighten this down, but I'm just gonna use my spoon, tighten that down and uh, pull down nice and tight. Big old eel gets hooked, that's not gonna go anywhere. Jeez, it is windy today, waves are big. If they weren't so big, I would be able to go out a little bit farther and fish out there, but man, look at that. It's all right, we'll make do with what we got today. Got the herring. And also got the squid. I'm gonna try to cut off a piece of squid and attach that to the size two hook. See what we can get in this little pool right here. Just give that one a shot first. Woo, waves, man. Just like that, one time through, and one more time through. Let's see what we can get right here. I don't know, hopes aren't really high in this hole. You never know. Now the thing with fishing like this, you can check hundreds of holes on every outing because all you need to do is leave your bait in the hole for about 15 seconds. And if nothing bites, chances are there's nothing in there. Let's go to a deeper hole. All right, let's see what we got here. A little bit murky, so it might be hard to see on the GoPro. Just poke around. The deeper you get, the better it is. 
Just find that deep hole. When you feel that rod or bamboo pole start shaking, you know you're getting a bite. Eh, uh, this here isn't quite what I'm looking for. All the rocks are pretty small. I'm looking for slightly bigger rocks where uh, the bigger fish and the eels have a place to hide. All right, let's move on to the next spot. I saw another good spot over here. Oh, that hole looks feels pretty good. No, not quite. Any potential spots? Don't really like the look of it there. Let's see. You know, if I could have a lucky day today, I'm gonna come back out tomorrow and cook something up. Today, it's just really testing my abilities. It's been so long since I've been out here. It's hard to poke pole when you can't see the bottom when it's so murky like this. It looks deep as heck here, but I just can't see anything. It's so murky. Gosh, those waves look scary when they come in like that. Look at that. Jeez. Like, look at that huge one. But luckily, it just breaks out there. All right, right here, it's, it's too murky. I can't see anything at all. So I'm going to find a spot where it's not so close to the water. And over there, it should be easier to see and therefore easier to catch. So you guys see this rock? That rock right there. It's big, right? So when it hits the ground, there should be some negative space in between. And those are the spots where the eels love. They just love it there. If they could find a spot like that, they will live there their entire lives. Oh, nobody's home there. All right, I'm gonna keep walking, find some more spots. So right down here, I just had a little crab on. It wasn't even that little. Let's see if he can, he's gonna bite this again. I don't know if you guys can see that on that underwater camera, I hope so. Oh yeah, he's got it. I see, oh, he, oh, did he just pull it off again? No. Even though there's a lot of area to fish, if you could find a nice stagnant pool that's out close to the water that has a lot of boulders, you should focus your energy there. You know, you could spend a good half an hour poking into every little hole. There he is. All right, got his claw. Come on out of there. Oh my gosh, that's a big crab, you guys. All right, I'm giving up on you, you little crab. Look at this, y'all. So besides fishing spots that I'm looking for, I'm also looking for fishing line. Look at this. There's no way this guy was getting this out. It's a, uh, looks like a good, what is this? Five ounce weight connected to about 50 pound test. Couldn't pull it out. There's five ounces of lead going in the pocket. Always good to forage for old lost tackle at low tide. Can you imagine when it's high tide casting out here, trying to find fish? Like, look at this deep channel. Snags everywhere, snags everywhere. That's why you got to use heavy, heavy line when you're fishing from shore. You know, I got to give a shout out to Kirk Lombard. I think he was the innovator of this method of fishing out here in the Bay Area. So I know I haven't caught anything yet. I've been to what, about 10, 15 spots. And right here, I will bet you $100 that I will catch an eel. Because these are exactly what I'm looking for. You see these smooth round rocks? and they're big too. So that means when they're all pushing together, they cannot fit like a puzzle piece tight. They can't fit like a Tetris piece, you know? There's big holes and they go down. You know, a hole that size can hold a needle that size. So just watch, just watch. This is the first one I'm poking in right here. If I can get two here, I'm gonna come back tomorrow and I'm gonna catch one to cook in only butter. I wanna catch and cook something only in butter my only ingredient but i gotta catch a few first and make sure that i can come out here and do it again tomorrow quiet 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 any eels poking their head out here it's cool too because when you do if it's clear enough like this and you see your bait you can see the eel suck the squid into their mouths oh right here no maybe Come on, baby. Oh, there's eels here. 100% there's eels here. Oh, there he is. Yep, got one. Oh, he took it. He took it. But is, is he hooked? That's the question. He's got it. No. I'm going to fling him up over there. He's got it again. Might be a small one, but that's an eel for sure. 
Oh, the anticipation is killing me. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Y'all see that? Oh, come on, take it, take it, take it. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. He's on, he's on, he's on. Oh, come on. Not getting hooked, though. They're bait stealers, too, man. They'll take your bait. You might have to rebait 10 times for, before he gets hooked. Oh, come on, all right. Now, when I feel like he's hooked, I want to pull in a slow, steady, strong motion like this. Oh, he's on, oh, no, God, oh, took my bait. Dang it, because if you just yank it out, it, it, it's, it, it pulls the bait right out of its mouth. Oh, that eel took my bait, and I forgot my burlap sack about 100 yards away. I should really tie that thing on my waist. There it is. Just careful you don't slip, especially if you start getting excited. Ah. All right, let's get back there before the sun goes down. Got a couple more hours to fish and it doesn't look like the tide's gonna rise up past here for another two hours, maybe hour and a half. So that should be plenty of time to get an eel or two. Okay, got it. All right, let's get this squid head on here. This usually sticks on pretty well. Stick it down this hole because I saw some bubbles here at first. Anybody home? And I know this eel heaven down here Yep, something's biting. Man, where's that hole that I was in at first that I was getting those bites? Was it this one? I forgot. Oh, yep, there he is. There's a fish, there's an eel biting. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on, take it. There he is, come on now. Just take it, man, put it all the way in your mouth. Like, just. Just take the whole thing. Okay, he's on it. Oh, come on. So many options here. That's what I'm saying. When you find a good spot like this, you could really take your time. All right. Oh, let's hit it from this angle. Got him. I 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 got him. Yeah. All right. Got him. There's one eel, baby. Woo. found one yes you see how he's hooked I got lucky on that one for one that's kind of small like this but that's a monkey face prickle bag I believe there are a couple different varieties of them look at his tail too and they're so slimy there's like almost no way you could pick these things up man his back is prickly prickled me you see that bright red on its tail almost looks like blood it's a really cool feature of these now, is that a monkey face prickleback or is that another type of prickleback? So I know there are several types. You know what? Kind of in a generous mood today. And he kind of looks like it might be pregnant. If you let me handle you, then I'll let you go, okay? Don't poke me. Oh, 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 calm, 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 calm. Calm down, calm down, calm down. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm gonna put him back, but I don't know, I feel like he might be pregnant. And it's, either it's pregnant or his belly is full of food. And if you guys ever seen my old monkey face prickleback videos, if you puncture their intestines when their bellies are full like that, it's the worst smelling thing ever. And now that I'm holding him more, he's looking kind of cute. So he's been nice, I'm gonna, gonna let him go. All right, guy, a little prickle back. I'll see you later. So let me go right here. There you go, little guy. All right. He goes back in his little hole. Oh yeah, man, that just made my day. So one thing you got to think about when you come out here at low tide, if it's the peak low and you want to fish right at the water line, I'd say you probably got about 40 minutes to fish that. Now, if you want to fish it up, you know 50 feet away from the water line you come here an hour and a half before high tide before low tide sorry then you can fish an hour and a half till after low tide so you can fish for a good three four hours sometimes you know that's enough time to come out here explore once you find a spot make sure to mark it because you can come out here first thing next time and then continue your hunt for better better spots how many of y'all remember this spot from a video I did like four years ago? I can't believe it's been four years. But this is what I was looking for originally, and I finally found it. 
So this is where I can start out at tomorrow. I know there's eels down here too. I'm being one with my environment right now. There it is. Oh, I just said that and I got a bite. Oh my God, that's so funny. It's a big one too. Oh, there he is again. Oh, come on. This is a big eel. Oh, oh, this has been, oh, 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 get out. Oh my gosh. This eel's got some weight on him. Holy moly, he might've just took my bait. This is what I call saltwater puddle fishing, or you could call it tide pool fishing, or you could call it poke polling, or you could call it pocket fishing. Whatever you call it, you know, it's fun. <laughs> That's all there is to it. All right, I'm gonna catch one more. For sure, I'm gonna catch one more. And after I catch that one, I'm gonna go to Safeway or whatever and buy a ton of butter. <laughs>